Hi everyone, it's Bella Gemma Nails, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this gorgeous pink ombre nail set at home. So if you want to learn how to make these, just keep on watching. Items you will need. Your nails. These are from BT Art Box, and they are the milky white ones. You will need your GH Dip in GW01, beige white. You will also need your lavender violet dipping powder in purple pink. Here are some cosmetic brushes that I'm going to be using for the ombre effect. Take some alcohol and wipe the nail. Apply your base coat. So you dip at a 45 degree angle, leave for two seconds, pull out, dust off, let dry. For this brand, you will want three coats. So you're gonna do this three different times. And the color that I used here is a translucent, like a milky white. It does glow in the dark and I'll show you what my nails look like after I'm done with this nail. So I wanted to show what I do when I wear the XXL nails. This is as long as it's going to get. This is medium long, but when I wear the XXL nails, I have to use this method, which I dip them in this tube because it's a lot longer. I know there's a device that you can use and dust the powder on your nail, but it's not as efficient as dipping it. So this has worked for me. I'll post links below to these tubes. You get a lot to a pack for an affordable price. So we're done with our last coat of dipping powder. We're going to dust it. Now we move on to the pink. So the first thing I do is I dip it as if I was doing kind of like an oval French. And I go down below. So you're creating a stain on the nail just by dipping it. I didn't put any liquid. I just dusted the nail and went straight into this pigment. This is where your synthetic makeup brushes, these are densely packed, are gonna come in handy. I'm going to be rubbing the pink into the nail. Okay, I'm gonna dip again. You decide how dark you want the pink to be. This is the fun part for me. You can do any color you'd like for your ombre. You can go high, you can go high or low, whichever you'd like. Dust the back, make sure you dust the back. Make sure you get the edges, the tip, that free edge. You want full color saturation there, but still smoked out. So you can see how it fades there. So I'm going back to my step one and I'm going to put a thin layer and dip it in my milky white just to seal that pink. Let dry for 30 seconds. I do advise you against going too far in with your nail file because you can eliminate some of the pink color. So just be gentle when you buff. Normally, if you dip it carefully, you don't have a lot of ridges or bumps. So you should be good with a light file. Okay, the last step that I do is I file the top, the free edge. I don't like filing too much because I like to keep it super square. We're going to apply two coats of the top coat. We're going to let it dry halfway with the first coat and then apply the second coat. Wait about a minute and a half. So for the next step, you're going to let dry for three to five minutes. I have my florals preparing for the gluing process. My opal flat backs. I have my pearl accents. And then I have my domed opals. I also purchased some faceted CZs for this design since my nails, as you can see, have the CZs throughout the design here. 
this is the glue that I'll be using to adhere the stones. Make sure that your nail has the top coat before you start gluing the gems. To adhere this gel glue, you're going to need a UV light. I'll post a UV light link down below. So how to adhere stones? I'm going to give you some pointers on how to make it look the most beautiful and be able to maximize the space. So there's always a rhyme and reason for how I design. So like the pointer finger is pointing this way with the charms, it's pointing outward. The ring finger is pointing to the left and then the middle one goes straight ahead. Same thing with the pinky. There's always a different design on them. And the big finger here, thumb, goes down the middle in a little swirl. So I'm going to design this as if it were going to be a middle finger, but we're going to get a little elaborate on it. You could choose whatever accent nail you want. You don't have to decorate all of your nails. I always do because I'm just a little nuts. So when you put glue, you want to create somewhat of a dome or a, like a, encapsulate your gems on top of creating a dome for them. So like this is like a little dome there and we're going to create a few of them depending on the size of the stones you're going to be using. But you're going to think about placement. So if you're going to apply a big gem in the middle, that's where you're going to put a lot of gel. Your flatter stones won't require as much gel, but as long as you encase them. So I'm creating a line here. It looks like a lot of glue, of glue because it is a lot of glue. We want to make sure we secure them as long as we can. See how it created a little bubble there with the glue? You kind of want that to protect the stones. So just watch that they don't shift when you're placing the other stones. And you're going to apply them in order of size that aesthetically just looks best. Now if you have too much glue, you can always take a brush and clean it up with some alcohol before you put it to cure. You want to leave some of the glue because it, like I said, encases the gem and you don't have them lift. I mean, it still can happen, but it's less likely to happen. Always try to push your gems together because you want as little gaps as possible. So I have a few tips while I'm cleaning my station. When you put the gems to cure in the lamp, make sure that you do all sides of the nails so that it cures nicely. And I also want you to keep in mind that these nails are actually thick. You can polish them and wear them without dipping them. Uh, certain nails like these are thinner and you can still wear them with just polish, but some are flimsy and those are created, those full cover nails are created so you can use with acrylic or dipping powder. I don't use acrylic on my nails or design on my actual nail beds because I don't like that and I'm allergic to acrylic. So if it's on my nail bed, I do get rashes. So doing it on press-ons is far easier. Plus you can pop them off and change them up as often as you want. And for removal, just know that you can get some warm water, hot warm water, add a little bit of oil, olive oil and some hand soap and sit with them for 10-15 minutes and then you can pry them loose after you've been wearing them and if you're tired of them. So that's another pointer. Make sure you always have a dotting tool for your gems. Okay guys, so I'm going to give you another tip. So these nails are actually a good brand. They are stable. They are not flimsy. You can wear them with just polish. You don't have to dip them. But if you want it to dip them and they're too long because obviously they don't fit in the powders. You can do the method that I showed you earlier with the tube, or you could dip it in two sections. So that's how I've done it in the past. I dip one side, and then I dip the other side, except it is more work because, and you also don't know if it's gonna be an even distribution. 
but in my experience it did work. So if you don't want to buy the test tubes, you could dip one side, let it dry, and then do the other side, let it dry. So you'd have to do three times on one side, three times on the other. So although it's more work, it still might be effective for you if you want to skip having to buy those tubes that I showed you. The clear ones are also sturdy. Uh, clear nails tend to be a little thinner than the milky white ones, but in this case, they're actually pretty thick, but they'll look beautiful if you use dipping powder with them. Okay, guys, so if you wanted to encapsulate the sides even more, then you would take a fine point here, dip it in your glue, and go around each of the stones. I usually cover the flowers and then go around the edges. I did put a substantial amount of glue but you can put it along sides. I would not recommend putting it on top of the stones since they will lack luster. You can put them over the flowers so they don't get caught in your hair, but this design is pretty easy, so that won't happen. So that is the final tip. Okay, my beauty, so this is the finished nail. You can see what it looks like on its own. It is absolutely stunning. This would be perfect for a middle nail. You can see how it has the flowers, the domed little accents, and then the opal swirl. You can see the ombre effect with the white. It looks beautiful at night. I'm going to show you that shortly. I actually pierced this nail, and I did that so that I can add a little dangle. When I used to do a lot of my crazy tendy nails, I always put chains and accent charms. So this is a little Swarovski heart and you would put it on your hoop and then you would have a little dangle there. So this is how you get salon nails at home. I hope that you loved this video. If so, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up or pop a comment below, perhaps do both. And if you're not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please do so down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.